Right, so it's been a little while since we spoke about the eight passengers situation regarding Ruby Frankie and Jordi Hildebrand, and that is because we were just waiting for a conclusion here, we're waiting to see what the sentence was. Well, as I'm recording this video, and hopefully I'm uploading this video tonight, the sentencing is just finished. We finally have a conclusion. Now, it can technically be appealed within 30 days. I don't believe that's going to happen, but of course I could be wrong. But the basic conclusion here, before we get into all the details, is that Ruby Frankie and Jordi Hildebrandt have both been sentenced. Now, the Law and Crime Network YouTube channel actually streamed this, so credit to them for this footage, but here we're going to take a look at the sentencing. So at this point, the prosecutor and Ruby Frankie's attorney have had something to say. Now, Ruby Frankie is going to say her statement. I would like to make a statement without any intent to change my stipulated sentence. So yeah, as she just said right there, she wants to say a statement without any intention to change the sentence, which does make me believe that she's not going to appeal it, but she does have that 30-day cushion. The past four years, I've chosen to follow counsel and guidance that has led me into a dark delusion. My distorted version of reality went largely unchecked as I would isolate from anyone who challenged me. I was led to believe that this world was an evil place filled with cops who control, hospitals that injure, government agencies that brainwash, church leaders who lie and lust. So yeah, she goes on to mention the delusion she's had over the years, which everyone has been saying for so long. Ever since these connection videos came out, it became very clear that her outlook on the world is incredibly delusional. Even before connections with the Eight Passengers channel, but specifically when connections became a thing, it became very clear because they were openly speaking about their opinions on the world and they were incredibly worrying statements. And as we'll hear as we go further on with this statement, Ruby Frankie puts a lot of blame on this on Jodie Hillbrand. Husbands who refuse to protect and children who need abused. My choice to believe and behave this paranoia culminated into criminal activity for which I stand before you today ready to take accountability. Jody Hildebrandt was never my business partner, nor was I ever employed by her. I have never received wages from her or connections. Right, so the audio isn't exactly great here, but what she says is that Jodie Hildebrandt was never her employer. She never received a wage of Jodie. Which, I mean, is kind of surprising because she was listed on the website as a team member, but apparently she made no money from it. Jodie was employed as my son's counsellor in 2019, and in 2020, I paid her to be my mentor. Right, so apparently this originally started with Jodie being her son's counsellor, and then Ruby ended up paying her to be her mentor. And I mean, of course, it's absolutely no secret by now that even before Connections was a thing, before Jodie was even in the picture... Ruby's behaviour was incredibly worrying. But I also think it's very clear that it seemed to get a lot more worrying after she met Jordy. And when you bear in mind all the other stories we've heard about Jordy in the past, the way she would brainwash people, it's not surprising. It is important to me to demonstrate my remorse and regret without blame. I take full accountability for my choices, and it is my preference that I serve a prison sentence. Thank you to the officers in Santa Clara and the Ivan City Police. Like okay, so she goes on to thank people, says she's going to accept accountability, and it's her preference to have a prison sentence. She then goes on to talk about Kevin and the fact that they're now divorced. You are the love of my life. I'm so sorry to leave to you to finish, but we both started together. And the ending of our marriage is a tragedy. Now, like I said before, the audio is actually quite hard to understand, so I can't really pick up exactly what she's saying. But from what I can tell, she says that Kevin is the love of her life and she's sorry that this has happened. Now, it's also worth mentioning that Kevin's attorney actually released a statement on his behalf before the sentencing. I believe it was yesterday. And as we can see here, it says, New statement from Kevin Frankie's attorney to Law Crime Network ahead of Ruby's sentencing. We trust the judge to sentence them both to 1 to 15 years for each of the four counts, which is actually what happened. To run consecutively, and then let the Utah State Board of Pardons decide if that should be shortened or other conditions imposed. The treatment these children received at the hands of those whom the children had the right to trust was horrific and inhumane, both physically and psychologically. Kevin remains focused on the rehabilitation of these sweet and vulnerable children so that they might return to a normal life as soon as possible. Now I believe there is still no update with the whole custody thing, they are trying to make that as private as possible as they should, so we don't really know what's going to happen with Kevin and the, the custody battle at this point. The statement carries on with Ruby apologising to her children, says that she loves them, but like I said before, the audio is very muffled, so it makes it very hard to hear. But after the statement, this is where we find out what Ruby's sentencing is. The sentence will be that Ms. Frankie serve four counts, four 
one to 15 year sentences based on her convictions for four counts of aggravated child abuse. Now this is what we expected with the plea deal, four counts of aggravated child abuse, each one being one to 15 years, meaning there's a minimum sentence of four years. How long she actually will spend in prison, we obviously don't know, there's a massive gap with the, the range of years, um, but yeah, I mean that's not gonna be something we know until it really happens. And this is where we get to Jodie Hillbrand's sentencing. Now one thing the prosecutor says after going into the horrific details of what actually happened in that household, which, as you can imagine, are incredibly hard to hear. He also goes on to say that since this has happened, Jodie has showed little to no remorse. After being caught, Ms. Hildebrandt has shown little to no remorse for her actions. In telephone conversations that will be provided in full to the Board of Pardons and Parole, and which she knew to be recorded, she's repeatedly claimed that she is the victim and the children are the perpetrators. She has gone so far as to say that the things said in this proceeding and covered by the media today will be full of lies. Yeah, I mean, this was for some reason incredibly shocking to hear, right? I know it shouldn't be because we are talking about Jodie Hildebrand here, but she's saying this on calls that she knows are recorded. Still trying to play the victim and in fact going as far to say that everything that's going to be said in court is just going to be full of lies. She is still incredibly delusional and she still thinks she's done absolutely nothing wrong, which goes against what her statement's going to be here. Which, I mean, with that being said, we can take her statement with a pinch of salt. I sincerely love these children. I desire for them to heal physically and emotionally. One of the reasons I did not go to trial is that I did not want them to emotionally relive the experience which would have been detrimental to them. Yeah, see, she's saying all this, but in recorded calls, she was saying that she is the victim and that everything that's going to be said in court today are lies. And I mean, I would have an incredibly hard time believing anything she said even before hearing that, but now it's just impossible for me to believe a single word she says. You would think that being in jail for so long at this point, right, it's been many, many months since they actually got arrested, you would think there'd be a little bit of remorse, right? Maybe a little bit of an understanding that you've done something wrong here, but apparently she doesn't understand it at all. But yeah, this is where we actually get to the sentencing itself, and it's the same as Ruby's. In this case, you terrorize children, and the results have been tragic. It's what happened to these children and your philosophy in dealing with them frankly seems detached from reality or any objective standard of decency or, or even common sense. Yeah, I mean, that is true, right? It is still unbelievable to think that her thought process is real. Like, the fact that she even thinks like that is baffling to everybody. I can't fathom how a human could ever think like that, but apparently Geordie does. The court finds under the statute, Utah Code 76-3-401, that given the gravity and circumstances of the offenses, the number of victims, and the history and character and needs of the defendant, that consecutive sentences are appropriate. The court imposes four one to 15 year sentences to be, again, served consecutively for each of the four counts of aggravated child abuse. Yeah, so again, it's the same with Ruby, right? One to 15 years, four different counts, minimum of four years. How long she's actually going to be locked up for, we don't know. I mean, it's a good thing that there's finally a conclusion, especially for the children's sake, right? These people who have treated these innocent children horribly for so many years, done stuff that is unthinkable. They are finally going to be facing repercussions. Also, this trial should now be over, right? Of course, there's a 30-day a appeal period. But realistically, hopefully, this should be the end of it, which means that the children can now move on and live their best lives. And as much as I clearly had a very negative opinion on Ruby Frankie and Eight Passengers and whatnot years ago before any of this happened, I really never expected it to get to this level. Like, this is, again, unthinkable. But... I mean, yeah, I I'm glad something's happened here. But with that being said, I am going to leave the video there. I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, goodbye.